Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to your Sunday's Talking Town, which, because of Storm Babette, stopping play on Friday night is a, a match day preview show for Bristol City this coming Wednesday. As always, whether you're watching live or on Catch Up, please do get active. If you're live with us this afternoon, get active in our live chat, as uh, many of you have already done so. If you're watching on Catch Up, leave your comments. We'll try and come back to as many as we possibly can. Hit the like button, and of course, subscribe, whether you're new or old. Uh, to talk in town, hit the subscribe button and, and help us on our way to six and a half thousand subscribers. We're closing in on five thousand with about two months left before the Norwich game. That's the target. Can we hit it? Matt Stanley says, Good afternoon, everyone. I hope those who went Friday got back safely. Absolutely. John B, our leads on a roll, hoping for a draw yesterday. Obviously, the leads coming through with a 3 2 win, having been 2 0 down to Norwich. Uh, many more comments. Get them coming. In Football Manager was released uh, back end of last week. I've got a quick question for you. Would you like to see some FM content on the channel? If you would, let me know in the comments, live chat, and we'll see what we can put together. Maybe an Ipswich Town playthrough, maybe a journey. Don't know. But if you want to see that sort of thing on the on, on the platform, do let me know. I'll be getting it anyway. So it's you know a mute point. But um, yeah, I can't wait to get stuck into that. Uh, and that Matt also says, Sheva Wednesday, penalty or no penalty? I've not seen it, but I'm sure one of these two wonderful gentlemen have. Joining me this afternoon is uh, the man from Del Monte and our regular Mr. Cruncher. It is, of course, Hard Somebody Truth. Somebody get the tables. Hard Truth are here. Delivering the truth that nobody wants to hear. The Cruncher and the Media Mogul. Afternoon. I haven't brought Rich in yet. So I, I want you to be on screen. I want you to be on screen when you when you see what I can see on the bottom of my screen. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, he is here. It is well, is it Richard Moss or is it somebody else? That's a great question. What is your name? What's <laughs> look your name? at that! Look at this man He's back on the shelves. He's in the pants. This man. We uh, will be relentless. Are you going to run towards adversity? <laughs> Oh, it was no, the stick, it stick it back on. Stick it back on. That was like a Scooby Doo moment. That was, wasn't it? it was. Who's on, who's on no, that was like when Vince was under the. It's me, Austin. It was me all along. So, for those that <laughs> don't know, that is obviously a Mark Ashton mask. Not great um, on the audio, that, by the way. <laughs> no, it's not. For those on audio, <laughs> he was wearing a Mark Ashton mask. Now, tell people at home, listening and watching, it looks, it looks a lot more angry on you than it does he off does. you. Um, well, this was, I think this was Mark Ashton when he was at um, Bristol City. Go, obviously, he was angry. And he's a bit angry like their fans because they don't like him. So um, a few of us might be um, sporting him at Ashton Gate on um, Mark Ashton Gate. Well, you're certainly fooled Matt Stannard because he, say, he says, uh, Mark, when will you have Wi-Fi at Portman Road? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you sit in the Churchman's End, you can get Oh, one. yeah, you can get it. Yeah, I found that out. Thanks to the hospitality, that was quite good. I remember when, when we I remember when we done the book um, launch. Yeah, we got the Wi Fi. So have you still got it on your phone? Yeah, then? yeah. Oh, I was sat, sat getting the uh, three word reviews and the and, and the emoji post all set up during the game. It was lush. It was like everyone else was trying to refresh their phone, man. It wouldn't bloody work, would it? No, mine's never worked in the stadium. No. If I go down onto like Mine's the little concourse in uh, the Pioneer Stand and get a tea or something, it kicks in then. But actually, in the in by pitch side, never. Never worked ever. But there we go. So you all wearing masks on Wednesday. Uh, John says, "Hope you can sing there's only one Mark Ashton on mm. Wednesday." I've got, better, says, I've got a better song than that. Have you? What is your song? Mark Ashton. He left because you're shit. There you go. Oh, there you go. Stephen Perry <laughs> says because uh, Bristol <laughs> City, City fans are rattled by they him. Rattled. I mean, I think inevitably in football, everybody in the end becomes a zero, don't they? In terms of hero to zero, really, like, yeah, everyone starts right, off. Sir. Like even Mick McCarthy came in riding the crest of the wave. I remember everyone was loving everything Mick was serving up. In the end, people couldn't have driven him out quick enough. Me being one of them. Yeah, me too. Wow. And and Paul Lambert, the whirling dervish, we called him Rich, didn't we? When he yeah. when he rocked up. Paul Lambert, yeah. Paul Hurst, Paul Cook, and uh, Paul oh, Cook. Man. Inevitably, there'll be a time when Mark Ashton is also probably seen, perhaps not in the same light as Bristol City fans, but very similar. I would I would argue because that's I think yeah, it's football isn't it, at the end of the day. You know, we're riding that wave at the moment. And where we ride it to is the most exciting thing. And last night I was out, gentlemen, and I said to you in the WhatsApp group, it's so good to finally be a town fan with other Where were you, fans. by the way? Where were Tell everybody where you were. I was at the rugby club. He's at up 
The egg chasers. Is that where the egg chasers, Matt? Is this Stone Market Ta- Rugby Club? Tally ho. Tally ho, boys. Bandwagon. Bandwagon yeah, jumper. I'm a bandwagon discovered jumper. New sports. You've discovered new sports this year, haven't you? Top of the year, Ashes. cricket, rubbish. Ashes. Oh, well, well, let's not... Let's not talk about the cricket yesterday, no, please. No, no, We'll do that so Tuesday I'm, night. We will do. And I'm starting to think I'm a oh. bit of a Jonah. Because every time I jump on a bandwagon, the bandwagon suddenly um, yeah, stops. But, yeah. look, if, you, if, you, if you look at the rugby, I'm okay. not a massive rugby fan. And by all accounts, going into that game, Matt, England were no hopers. You know, didn't have a hope. And then they well, were what? Yeah. They've done very well. I mean, I was really, look, I, I'm a casual rugby fan. You know, my father-in-law is really into it. So I got into it by that. I don't really understand it to the level that when people are commenting on BBC website and stuff, but apparently think people were saying that England didn't really play that well last night because all the, the kicking. Three, three pointers kicker, kicking didn't get near to a try particularly. It was almost enough, wasn't it? But, you know, at the end of the yeah. day, the result counts, doesn't it? The South Africa did it by one point again, as they did against the French, I think it was. was the game they won by one point. They yeah. played some. Fair, they absolutely. Played well, yeah, it doesn't matter how long you're leading for, just as long as you're leading by the final minute. And that's... That's kind of what two happened. minutes. Apparently, two I mean, minutes. apparently, Farrell had a lot of people blaming him because he got a bit lippy with the referee, which you're not yeah, allowed to did. do in rugby. And they moved the ball forward 10 yards. Oh, see, I like that. I like that. Watching that, I've, I've watched good. quite a bit of the World Cup, and you hear him talking to the players yeah. and he's telling them what yeah. to do. Is that um, Andy Farrell's son? Yeah, oh, he is. Yeah, Andy it? Farrell he used to play for Wigan. I remember when he was playing rugby league. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rugby's way is a different culture, though, hasn't it? I mean, it's like you know, what do they say? It's like a what is it? It's all played by gentlemen. Gen- uh, is football is a game played by. Oh, I can't remember. Someone know, in the chat remember. Remember. <laughs> That's it. That went well. But there's a respect I... thing there with the match officials, and you know, you you'll say, "Can I talk to the sidelines, please?" I mean, you'd never get any that in football, would you? And I'm too far the down end. the line. I know, I know they had a little bit of they were shoving and pushing at the end. I think that was a bit of frustration. But then they all line up, don't they? Yeah. Oh, Matt's put it in there. Look, Fugs game played by gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. They, they all line up and, like... they all line up and clap, don't they, when they come down the winning team. Tom Curry comes off. He's got his ear sticking out. He's got a big gash down his head. He's got plaster on his nose. Yeah. It'll be a good final, yeah. though. All Blacks and um, South Africa. I think it'll be very good. I've got no idea. Now I'm off the bandwagon again. I see. Third place playoff on Friday night. Nah, yeah. yeah. It it was was the the playing well, that. It, well, nobody, but it does feel like this World Cup has been going on for like the last six months. I, I swear it started... It's gone a long time, isn't it? But if you, you look at the way they're smashing into each other, they do need a week to recover. You need a week to recover. Well, they were saying that about the Cricket World Cup, Rich. They're saying that's, that's going on for too long. Because only yesterday they started... It's, 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 going on, it's been going on too long for England, and obviously they didn't know it's hot in India. We didn't know it's hot in India, and it was <laughs> fucking jokers. Don't there get me go. started on the cricket. you got oh, more of that exactly. coming on Tuesday for yeah. Talking Cricket. Now, we are here, obviously, without a game to, 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 to discuss because Storm Babette stopped play. Uh, before we get into that, Stephen Parry's asked again, so I'll ask the, the, you two, do you think the um, Wednesday penalty was or wasn't a penalty? It was, it was, no penalty. It was given, then it no wasn't penalty. given. No penalty for you? No, there's, there's, there's an angle. If you see it, he just gets a nick on the ball and it goes out for a corner. Look, it's, it's a risky challenge. Um, but I think in the end, the referee has got the correct decision after making the wrong decision, which, look, fair enough, he's held his hands up, Gov, and he has actually come to the right decision in the end. If you're Wednesday, you're a bit frustrated because it was nil-nil at the time and they were playing playing all right. But another mm. defeat. What another defeat? defeat? What I didn't, no, I didn't what? see it, but I see um, they lost 1-0. Yeah. Writing's on the wall there. Who's, who's, gone in as the man- who's gone in as the manager there, then? Danny Roll. Danny Roll. He's Young. German. He's 34. Chris Powell's joined right. his um, coaching staff, Matt. Oh, well, that's interesting. All right. Nice fella, him. Chris yeah. Hmm. My, uh, my Watford, my former in Watford fan thinks they're in a relegation battle this year. He, he says it's, it was a good win. Moves us clear of the relegation. But which, they my dark horses. We're in. Yeah, they were your dark horses. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the storm stopped our own game. Announcement came at approximately 5 p.m. Lots of social media discussion, as inevitably there always is on these type, types of things. Uh, lots of people blaming various broadcasters, uh, the, the the club themselves, some have said. Rotherham, lots of blame sort of being sort of thrown around in all directions. What, do, what what are your thoughts on a on a 5 p.m.? First of all, you, Rich, because you went. Um, amber warning, everyone knew it was a storm. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? 100%. 100%. If, you, if, you're, if you're making a trip, you've seen the weather, 
you know full well that there, there's a prospect that that game could get cancelled, go. Because yep. you see that morning, the, the thing it was it was interesting because if you look at the timeline, eight eight a.m. Uh, Rotherham railway station flooded, closed. Right. Uh, can't remember what time they put the tweet out on the Rotherham their site saying no pitch inspection. Was it about ten o'clock? I think Somewhere it was something there, like that. Yeah. Ten o'clock, no pitch inspection, game will go ahead. Right. But this is where it falls down for me because from ten o'clock till five o'clock, when the game is cancelled, Matt, there is literally there's no communication with anybody. Now we're driving up there. I went with Craig. Brilliant for him to drive. And I'm looking at my phone and you're seeing the, the river Don. And you're thinking, blimey, this this don't look good. But there's there's nothing coming out. So once again, look, it, it's football fans and we'll be there come rain or shine. But Very true. It, it's just how it is. And whenever the replayers will be there. But are we treated correctly? Probably not, because you need a little bit of communication. And then um, Colin didn't get on the bus. There was three buses, didn't make it out of their yard. They were flooded in. So there was in only Middlesex, one coach. Yeah. yeah, there was only one coach went. So who ultimately, Matt, does it come down to? Because I hear Rotherham getting the blame. Is it a lot to do with them? Pitch, fine. Nothing to matter with the pitch. It's outside the ground. So you've got local council, obviously, maybe. I don't know. Police, Police safety definitely. people, safety who, who yeah. does it ultimately come down? Is it because it's on Sky that they didn't call it off till later? Because I've seen a lot of people say that. Okay. And at the end of the day, people moaning about Sky. Listen, you've got to accept it. People moan when we don't get on Sky. Then they moan when we're on Sky. I tell you what, if we get to the Premier League, 3 p.m. kickoffs, I see they're bringing out the new TV deal. Every yeah. single game, apart from a 3 p.m. kickoff, will be screened. So, And you have to take the financial that comes with it. You know, th this is football now, Martin. And, and look, it's, it wasn't handled brilliantly. Ultimately, who is to blame? But it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. And um, Rob says it was like Cooler Lake of the River going over. Please get involved with danger of life. They had no idea that would happen earlier. Uh, the announcement, I think at 5 p.m., if I remember rightly, says something about the advisory board, Matt, you know, from advice from the safety mm -hmm. advisory board. That was what the reason was given. Um, some fans I saw were showing around Rotherham's ground the day after, and the pitch was in absolutely fantastic condition. I saw that posted on social media, if I remember rightly. So it really does come down to, as Rob says here, the the surrounding areas and, and the danger to life, I guess. Yeah. From my past experience working in those kind of things, it used to be safety advisory group. So the you'd you'd always the club would have been speaking to the police the whole time, I would have thought. But as Rich says, the lack the lack of communication that came out between over seven hours is you know is upsetting for everybody. I, I remember, you know, the snow game, the famous snow game against Leicester. I literally was like looking down my road. It was like absolutely pumping it down with snow. I'm just thinking to myself, do you know what? I'm just going to watch this on Sky. And maybe, you know, you have to sometimes make a decision. I've bought my tickets. You know, Rich, you've gone to a game this season. Car broke down. I had to go back and watch it at home, didn't you? Sometimes you just have to make a decision. Think, is it worth it? You know, it's on Sky. If I haven't got a Sky subscription, I can pay a 10 or whatever it is to have 24-hour access and watch the game that way. Um, yeah. But look, people make their own choices, don't they? We always say you haven't got a gun to your head to go to these things. But if you wanted to go, you go. But, you know, it's not often you get amber warnings on a evening game that if you town and playing it's on sky i is i mean it's no. you know it's a bit but don't you oh. don't you think it would have took it, it, it's a big call say you get to, to midday right you're looking at the radars you know it's raining and it's going to rain all day yeah. and all night yeah, so absolutely. does somebody matt not need to sort of put look they're putting their neck on a limit make a decision and say right we're going to call this game off that's the difficult thing, isn't it? Because that's what everyone's saying. The pitch was fine. It's the surrounding areas that weren't. I remember a game around the Emirates was called off once because of ice around the Emirates. Pitch was fine. But because of the ice around the Emirates, people, again, it was the same thing. And of course, people don't know, Rich, you were saying that the, this River Don goes actually around the New York yeah. Stadium. Yeah. So it's in very close proximity, isn't it? Maybe they should have, maybe someone should have just said, look, the weather's not going to be any better. The amber warning continues. I think we'll we'll just call the game off. But maybe Sky, maybe Sky wanted it because it is a Sky game. Maybe they did take it down to the maybe three hours before is the last time you can actually make a decision on it. I don't know. We're guessing. We're guessing a little bit. We are but... guessing, aren't we? But uh, it wasn't. It wasn't played. It was called off. Um, uh, the only game I think in the championship that this weekend was. I think there was um, only one other game in the football league that was cancelled. Yeah. I think the Mansfield game. 
Other yeah. than that, if it had been played yesterday, the game would have been on. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think I agree with that. Uh, Matt says, one of my favourite all-time games should have never carried on. That was Roy Keane. You wouldn't argue with him. That was crazy. That game was we were 3-0 up. 3-0 up, weren't we, at half-time? Jason Scott. I always again. remember that great pit. There's a great picture of Martin Fulop. God rest his soul. There's him. I think there's Delaney. They're all looking out the tunnel, waiting to come out in the second half. You can see and you're thinking, probably, we ain't playing this game. We're 3-0 up. That was when Sven Goran Eriksson was... Um, that's, right. that's the city manager, wasn't it? So yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Who thought they'd uh, who thought that team would go on in a few years and win the uh, Orange um, Balls? Was that Orange Ball that night? They must have had the Orange, orange Ball. ball. I love an orange ball. Lines? The blue lines? Blue yeah, lines. The blue lines. <laughs> but they had, had to, to really... stop the game a couple of times, didn't they? To clear the to lines. Clear the... Yeah, they did. did you both yeah, go? I remember. Did you both well. there? I, no, didn't I... Go. I didn't go. I was no, supposed to be at work's Christmas party that night and I didn't go to that and I stayed at home and watched it. I remember. Do you remember him? Shane O'Connor. He's, he's, he's a great in that game picture. that night. He's in that he had picture. A great isn't he? game that night on yeah. the left hand yeah. side. Chilo Cudder. That was David great. Norris. Time. Yeah. But uh, obviously, with the rest of the championship playing, we now have a game in hand on them, and we now have a league table that shows us sort of what's changed, how has it changed since Leeds overturned a two 0 deficit to win three uh, two. They're now sort of hot on our heels, if you like. Six points. We have got a game mm. in hand. How did you see yesterday's results coming in, Ritz? Did you? Was it a town afternoon? Was it? Was it a mixed bag? How did it fall for town yesterday? I think if you look at that Norwich game, I think, look, we all had a chuckle, didn't we? They lost the 2 0 <laughs> lead. But it, it probably a draw would have suited us there. Um, mm, mm. But I, I said I said on here a couple of weeks ago, boys, Leeds are the only team that really die fear because they, they've got the the players to do that. I think they literally made a load of subs, Matt, and they stuck literally all their strikers on the pitch. And you think, blimey, that's scary. But I think if you sit back, they said, I was, yeah. I was looking at a couple of Norwich fans' comments, I think Norwich sat back. In hindsight, do you have to have a go at Leeds? Probably. You, yeah, you probably, Because you if you're sitting there, you're probably going to get picked off and you're going to lose anyway. So just, you might as well have a go at them because I don't think defensively they're that brilliant. No, um, they're, they're attacking prowess. We saw you, in, you, in the space of 10 minutes, didn't we? <laughs> but you, look, right. you, but yeah. you look at that table as well now, it's taking shape. You've got Southampton, they were going through that poor run. Yeah, they're win coming into it. Hull, yeah. Ryan Fraser, late goal. So, yeah, and then we've got our, yeah, look, Bristol City on um, yeah, Wednesday, eighth. sitting in eighth, West Brom ninth. What it does do is obviously it, it reinforces that gap that you've created for yourself because now you look at it with the game in hand against the team that's in the relegation zone. Whether yeah. things change by the time you play them, whether they've had a managerial change by that point, no, in our luck, it'll be a week after they've changed their manager and it'll be a resurgent Rotherham. But, <laughs> yeah, looking at the points gap. Matt, it does put you in a in a steady position as it did before, and and Leicester really they're they're making a case for making a one one team division. Just they they've gone all, almost already doing a Burnley, aren't they, from last season? I think yeah. But look, the the positive is when you game in hand, you're right behind them. So if we're talking about Leicester making it a one team mm. division, at least we're hot on their heels. You know, I mean, I like I like you know what is it now six points because if we didn't of us not playing, so what Lee's twenty two, Town twenty eight. Yeah, I did like the eight point. I did like the eight point barrier. But it I mean, could be nine thing. if you win your game in hand and you yeah, carry exactly. on the form you've, you've you've had. Yeah, yeah. We don't know when that game. Do they think Not that game's going to get rescheduled sooner rather than later? There's, there's a there's a date early November, November, and I think there's a date early December. If you look at that, guys, you look at Sunderland. Gov, they're in sixth place, nineteen. Yep. Win that game in hand, we're twelve points clear. Yeah, madness, and yeah. sixth. Yeah. Well, I worked out the other day, didn't I? That you, we only have to win another seventeen games of our remaining yeah games in in order to to achieve what was third place last year which you know <laughs> how you, you many put points it in, is that how many points would that make 85 i think it was i think it, well, 82 in the 80s but it's only it, it says only 17 you know a lot of football left to be played but yeah. Yeah. you've put yourself in a an amazing position in, in which just to have your own to steal a cricket phrase run rate where you just have to keep knocking one off you can yeah you can lose one yeah i know what i've done there dear idea um <laughs> family show that's not quite what i meant matthew did you find out the gutter um we'll, we'll, we'll move swiftly on does um does, does not have any good lord alan partridge let's take out. a moment let's take a moment check steve Coogan's busy for the norwich preview we could probably get him on <laughs> he's their favorite son isn't he steve Coogan? You know, yeah. alan where partridge. um where are Great the in the league now Gov. They are, are they on, uh, ninth. Are they see. There's no. another team, you know. Oh, hang on. They're not even. Oh, ninth. No, they, they, they must just be down. thirteen. There you go. Down, thirteen. So look, look at that, look at that clump. See, they've won the last five. They're only two points off six. 
<laughs> See, they've won five on the spin now. So yeah. they're um, another two. And this is what I'm saying. You've got teams like Bor- Borough, Southampton, even Leeds. We've stolen a march on these teams. Mm. Yeah. By being so yeah. hot so early, they've got to catch us now. They have. And that, that, that sixth to sort of, well, 17th downwards, that reminds me of, of the old championship that I, I, we, we used to know and love, where literally mm. it's a mm. clump of teams that are all very much... Win one, shoot up eight places, lose one. Like Norwich did yesterday. Norwich winning yesterday, 2 0 up. They were like f- in, in, into fourth or third. Um, <laughs> went from 2 0 to 3 2, and they shot down to, down to 10th. It's like <laughs> such a, a big I think they play. I think they play Borough in the week as well. So that's a there big game go. for them. You know, look, both on 17, one of them yeah. can jump up. But you look at Swansea go in 17th place there on 15 points. Yeah. They're only four points off sixth. Yeah, and mm, then it, mm. I mean, the whole division is, is still, still very close and it is obviously very early days. But does no game Wednesday affect your thinking? And we'll come to team a bit later, but does it affect your thinking heading into Bristol City? Obviously, now you should be all fresh. Obviously, Wes Burns' his injury is in is what it is, but Cameron Burgess gets more time off. Uh, Massimo gets more time off. Those yeah. international players gets, get an, a, a breather as opposed to getting thrust straight back into the action. Was it, is it, is it good that we didn't have a game? Is it going to stop our momentum? Does it affect your thinking in terms of lineup for Wednesday? Where does it leave you now, having not played at all this weekend? Yeah, it's a nice, it's an interesting one. I certainly think probably the, the team we were kind of guessing maybe for Friday night is going to change for Bristol City, and I think you probably will see Lawn go back in there. Um, of course, we were, the momentum was great. We keep be- bemoaning these international breaks, don't we? Because mm. we're losing our momentum, but. No, it hasn't really impacted us so far, has it? And let's see what let's see what we do on on Wednesday night at Bristol City. I mean, it's going to be a tough away game. I suppose that takes the pressure off a bit, doesn't it? You've not had two back to back away games, other than you've you've not played you've not played the Rotherham game, but they were there. They've had to mm. travel, which is a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, let's hope fresh legs, hungry to go. You know, the leave it alone, go. Don't don't touch it. Oh, it's, it's annoying me. Time I catch myself. It. Every time I catch myself, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, you're right. We would have had to travel, but we should be yeah. fresher, particularly the international players, Rich. And I've actually, I'm tempted to have the same team I put on the screen for Rotherham. In fact, I am not tempted. I want that same team. I, I just think if you've had a it's game Taylor. plan, yeah, Taylor, well, of course, Taylor in midfield, that goes without saying, the, the, the sky is blue. Um, you know, I've been putting him every single week, Matt, <laughs> every single week without foul. One time I'll get it right. But Williams at right back, Hutchinson instead of Burns. I- I'd be tempted, whatever you were going to go into, Rich, yes, on Friday, I'd go in with it on Wednesday. Uh, I think Luongo plays now. I do, because mm-hmm. like like you say, Matt, he's had Tuesday was his last game, so that's over a week. Um, so I-, I think I think I went for Jackson. I think I might go Hutchinson. I think he might play Wednesday. Um, and look, it's like he's... It's interesting because people will probably bemoan if we don't get a result, they say, oh, yeah, because we didn't play. And if we win, we just roll on, don't we? And then Bristol played yesterday. I think they were a little bit fortunate. They won 1-0 against Coventry. They're very fortunate. Um, Coventry at the bar or post twice. Had something like 15 calls. Is, um, what I want to know, is uh, Nigel Pearson still on his crutches? What did he do? I think don't he's know. had a knee operation, isn't he? All right. Yeah, I seen the other day when he was um, hopping across the pitch. I think it was at Leicester, like to applaud the fans, and he was like, his crutches yeah. out. But look, it'd be a difficult place to go. Um, but I think we should be fresh. We should be ready. We should be firing straight out the block, shouldn't we? Really, we've not had a game for what two and a half weeks now, so they really like should it, be. Man. They should be chomping at the bit. And look, Kieran, mm. they're, they're all the backroom staff. They'll have them well prepared. You know, I don't think it's really an issue that we didn't play Friday. We could have picked up some injuries on Fridays, and we haven't. So. <laughs> Let's just go down to Bristol. I think we, I don't know if they've sold out, nearly sold out, 3,000 fans, good back in again. Let's go there and get the win. Yeah. I mean, injuries can happen at any time. Look at Burns. Been on two Welsh trips, come home with two injuries. So yeah, This is yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. Um, I, I saw uh, one of the Bristol City podcasts tweeted this morning about some comments that Pearson made after the game. And he's, these are the comments. My, my position has not been secure, which irritates me. Pearson added when asked to expand on his words, why don't you ask somebody above me for once, see if you can find somebody who's going to say anything the last two weeks have. Um, so a little bit of friction maybe at Bristol City. I don't, I don't know. Like He's a he's a bit of a frosty character, isn't he, only, Matt? Oh, he is, yeah. He used to have rows yeah. with the media in Leicester City Leicester. press conferences. Ostriches. Yeah. Ostrich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, look, he was he was well-renowned for that. Look, good player. I remember him when he played for um, 
Sheffield Wednesday. I think he played against Towns. Remember that season when we um, under Lyle when we played him in the quarterfinals of the League Cup, wasn't it? I think yeah. he was playing centre off for them. Look, he's he's a good manager, but it seems there there's a little bit sort of friction mm. with him and the sort of mm. him and the board. But um, I see yesterday they had five academy players on the bench, so they've had a few injuries. Um, he was a national I, appointment, wasn't he? Mark Ashton appointed him after they yes. were that younger guy, didn't they? Was it Holden? Dean Holden, was it? Dean Holden, yeah. Dean? Yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? He appointed with him, didn't he, at Bristol City, Ashton, and then with this guy, with Pearson. I think they're so, going to play three at the back. I see they've got that Rob Dickey they got from QPR. He's absolutely he scored, yeah. mountain, he? scored, didn't he, yesterday? Oh, is it? he got the goal, was, was it? Um, Nigel Pearson was one of the Watford managers when he got... <laughs> he, did, he, he is. Oh, I was minute. listening the other day. I can't remember where it was. It was they went through the Watford managers, probably the last ten or twelve, and none of them. About thirty games is about the top whack that they've done. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. And you and think the, the old um, what's his name? He's got a new contract, and, the, and he's the one probably yeah. doing oh, yeah. up there with the worst of the of, of the exactly. lot. But um, but yeah, according to Sofa Score, <laughs> right. this was their this was their team yesterday. So a back three, back really five. Nice. Sykes, yeah. Dickie, King, Pring, Robert. Andy King. He play, he's a centre midfielder. Wow. Yeah. Matty Jones for your mate, your mate, Andre Vyman. Oh, yeah. yeah Vyman's yeah. a good player. Get me he's, Vyman. He's, he's um, knocking on there a little bit, isn't he, in years? He is. At, so. one point, at one point, if you've been watching the show a long time, Martin wanted Pearson as manager and Rich wanted to bring Vyman in at, to town. So there's a little connection here. <laughs> This is so much better than Cali, though, Matt. So, yeah, you, know, you can you can <laughs> keep that one, mate. Uh, Tyler Go uh, Tay Taylor Gardner, Hickman, uh, Sam Bell, and Tommy Conway. That was the rest of the Bristol City lineup. So, a 5 3 2, a 3 5 2. Transition might be key then, Rich, if it, if, if it is a, a back three, because you'll have the two fullbacks yeah. high up the field. And that's where I think maybe Hutchinson and players yeah, like that. Yeah, Amari. Comes, pace. The pace of the game, yeah, the pace Caden. of the transition. Caden. Could be Caden. Yeah, it could be Caden on the break. Mm, mm, could be Caden. Mm. I prefer Hutchinson uh, at this point, I think. Naki Wells is still there. Is he still? Yes, uh, Naki Wells is still there. He's their second top goal scorer. Um, he could play him. He was always linked to... Wasn't he in our, Was We'll be linked to him at some point. I'm sure he was linked to him at some point. I remember when he was at Bradford? That was where he sort yeah. of... Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a good player. He would have been a good town so, player. Huddersfield, was wasn't he? Yeah. 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 I'm sure he scored in that, in that, um, that game with our... Who was the guy on loan? Um, Zeki Fries. That's it. Yeah, I'm sure Naki Sean, was. <laughs> Sean Scannell. I remember him. He Ex was part of the match that yeah. day. Sean yeah. Scannell. Absolutely. Oh, God. <laughs> Zeki Fries. So, too. Bristol City under Nigel Pearson. See, eighth, 18 points from 12 games. Beat Coventry yesterday, which we've said 1 0. Top goal scorer is Sam Bell on four goals. And top assist is Kay Naismith with two. So I don't know actually. Look at the He's a good player, him. No, no, Smith. He was at Wigan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He went to yeah, Luton. Yeah, he went yeah. to Luton, didn't he? He's all these people could play centre half or up top or wherever he, he wanted to play. He, play did he leave when they went into administration? He yeah, probably must have played so. on the under Cook. I think he was yeah. a skipper that day. We played them on the first day of the season, but behind closed doors, Two wasn't it? The Teddy Bishop header. Teddy Bishop. Good old Teddy. Drinan hit the bar. There we go. Oh. Um, like for small margins. What was it that got in? Head to head with Bristol City, town of 129. They've lost 23 and they've drawn 14. So currently hold the the, the all time head to head record. It's always good. My um my favourite memory of us playing Bristol City was that six nil. John Walt was hat trick just before Evans took over, wasn't it? It was one of the Wallace. last games, I think. Did, before that Evans takeover. Did Chopper get a couple of goals against Bristol City? Chopper scored for I went first day of the season. I think we beat them three. I think David James was in goal for them. Yeah, I think he I think was. the last time yeah, I went there, I remember Kevin Foley playing. I'm not sure he played centre midfield that day, Gov. I think he possibly <laughs> might have been right back. He lost you, two one. Yeah, well, well, you can't have gone in 2019 then, because we last played them in 2019, 12th of March. COVID. Oh, was that COVID? Yes, it was. It probably was actually. Now you mention it. Yeah, one one draw. Paul Lambert was in charge. Um, was it an own goal? Yes, it was. That was on goal. Sky, wasn't it? That was on. That was a Sky game. Was that? A yeah, that wasn't a COVID Tuesday? game, Matt. Was no, that COVID? wasn't. No. When's COVID? Tuesday night. Know. It was a Tuesday yeah. night, wasn't it? That was on yeah. Sky. Yeah, I didn't go that day. No. Team was Bart, Emmanuel, Chambers, Entiala, Kenlock, Gazelle, Shalabar, John, Nolan, uh, Edwards, Jackson, and Judge. Caden's still there. Toto got a red card yesterday, by the way. Did he? Yeah, off you go. Before Where's John was... Nolan these days? John Nolan was at Tranmere. But what is a what? John Nolan? I don't know what I've still not, no one's ever come forward <laughs> with what the is information. We'll never, what is it, John Nolan? we'll never solve it. 
He played well. There was a couple of games under Lambert. Do you remember he no, scored he the didn't. header? He scored the header away at West Brom. Matt. West Brom. Yeah, he went for oh, a little purple patch and he got injured, didn't he? And that was it. Purple patch. Got about two Can goals. you guess who scored for Bristol City? Um, twenty. Was it nineteen? That wasn't Lucky Wells, was it? No. Oh, I remember watching this game. <sighs> Don't know. Um, on a postcard. Adam Webster. Correct the Mondo for three hey. points. <laughs> Adam Webster. There Mark Ashton. I reckon if you actually got Mark Ashton candidly in an interview, that's got to be his best bit of business ever. Because oh. yeah. he's identified a young talent, bought him for a very good price, and then sold him for an absolute monstrous fee. Yeah. Like, he, we never saw the best of him, did we? He was always in and out and had injuries and things. You could see he was injury. good, but never had them run of games, did he? Just never had that That's run of games. trading, isn't it? It's fine. It was, yeah. That is it as a blueprint. Here's a question for yeah. you, just because, you know, it's not a week and we've got a game to talk about. Matt Clark went as a uh, as a mate weight in I that like Matt Clark. Yeah. I like Matt Me Clark. Too. Should the should the club have really done more to keep hold of both Clark yeah. and Simon Webster and built a we, centre half partnership that was young? He hardly played, did he? He didn't yeah. play a lot for our first team, did he, Matt Clark? No, no, no. Where is he now? He got to be Portsmouth. No, I think, I think he, he's a borough. Is he a borough? He went to borough. Oh, you're he's right. Been to he went to Derby. Brighton, Brighton, Derby. He's had a few Ooh. clubs, but a lot of loan moves, isn't he? Yeah. Let me yeah. look. Matt Clark is a centre defender for Borough. He's, he oh, is. He's I a he yeah, I thought he was. He's Five bald now. 11, yep, 1996, 27, born <laughs> in Barham, there. England. Where has he been? What other clubs has he had? Town. Yeah, Derby, West Brom, he certainly went to. Yeah, West Brom. Brighton? Got... Is, he right? yeah. is he a Brighton? So, yeah. Yeah. last five have been Borough, West Brom and Lone, Derby, Lone, Brighton, Portsmouth, and then obviously that was no, it was us. So, that was only he's a, a good career. He's I, think really he won, good career. I think he's won Player of the Year a couple of times. At, um, yeah. Definitely won it when he was at Pompey. Hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. Did you see West Brom got booed off at half time? Against Plymouth. Against, yes, Probably Chris was doing the booing. Well, I see Chris's tweet when he said Plymouth are the best attacking team that he's seen this season. Oh, they ain't seen us yet. You, exactly. That is what I was going to say. 100%. He's, that's not Sky. Been, There's another Sky game for us, by the way. Loads, he's fuming that that's a 5.30 because he thought it was going to be a lunchtime one. I said, look, you can go for a drink after the game and drown your sorrows. Now he's going to have to wait all the way through to 5.30. That'd be a good sure. Sky game now, I think. Do you think? Oh. Yeah. So, good so, so perhaps for, the, um, for those that don't know, by the way, great comment by Archie. Archie, welcome. I'm glad you found this. It says, uh, I've only recently just come across this channel on YouTube, uh, but great to see the football club being so well represented. Keep up the good work, gents. Thoroughly enjoyable to listen Brilliant. to. Thank you for watching. It is, what Archie. We do it for. We've um, got a huge archive you can go back and watch. Oh, huge. With some really bad chill. takes. With some really <laughs> bad takes. Uh, ben Moore, Sean Scannell is now at Hornchurch, Hornchurch under nice. Steve Morrison. Well, Millwall oh. do need a manager because Gary Rowett's part of company. Warnock has been linked, didn't he? Surely. Uh, I've got a guy, a mate who supports Millwall, and he said, uh, no thanks. Oh, come on. <laughs> if they announce Warnock tomorrow, you you wouldn't be upset. Bring Mick back. <laughs> There's not many clubs in the championship that would be upset if Neil Warnock. I think, I think Rowett's done a, Rowett, Rowett done a very good job there, yeah. Matt, I think. Nearly played him. Yeah. I think he, they, he was sort of a bit of part in the ways. I think he probably took him as far as... Um, Stagnated, didn't he? A little bit. They could go. Mm -hmm. But what what, yeah, what are Millwall... What is their... What's their ambition? Yeah. They want to get to the Premier League? Never done it, have they? You become a victim of your own success, don't you? Like you Definitely. set your own, te you're, you're like, like right now, Kieran McKenna has got us. That expectation will now suddenly rise, and you'll expect to be maybe something that you're, you're not. Not in our case, we're a huge club, but Millwall were always a team that you would never consider, personally speaking, as a playoff team. They get themselves built into a, a playoff or the periphery of a playoff team, and then the expectation rises yeah. that you expect to be. Well, they missed right? out last season. When when you look at Luton. And you think, Millwall, what's their expectation? A club like them looking at Luton, thinking that Luton have got to the Premier League. It was nearly us because they nearly made the playoffs. I think they only missed out. Was it last day of the season? Or... Very close, wasn't it? They were Very right close. in the mix right mm. till the end. So, mm. Mm. you know, once you're in them playoffs, Matt, you know what it's like. You, you get a bit of luck or a refereeing decision. And by the way, check out, if anyone's not seen it, the Stevenage versus Port Vale game yesterday. There is the most blatant penalty you've ever ever seen in your life for Port Vale. By the way, Steve Evans last week wants to bring in uh, VAR in League One because uh, he's bemoaning that Stevenage have had some really dodgy decisions. I didn't see him actually commenting 
yesterday, funny enough, on that decision because it was <laughs> it was the most stonewall penalty you've ever seen, <laughs> ever. Shocking. That's a chicken. They did quite well, Stevenage. They did quite well, Matt. Yeah, they are doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Right. That, that thinking you're saying about Millwall, though, was just us in the League One, though, wasn't it? Yes. You know, you've got that expectation to push on. Certainly with me, wasn't it, when we went through that middle third of the season where I started losing the plot a bit. But, but, then, I mean, but then you you, know, look, you you look at Derby, look how they're struggling this year, Matt, in League One, and it, you look at how long it took us to get out. Yesterday, yeah. I think they were not very happy with Paul Warren. They lost 1-0 away to Shrewsbury. Conrad Horain, obviously. Yeah, was he was, talking, yeah. So not going great there, best. is it? No. You actually hear him, didn't you? Saying, we're, we're, I'm doing my best. We're all doing our best. Do you think then. that's a good idea when a player goes and tries to talk I, I know. I'd fair, fair play to him for doing that, but he's captain, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's captain. So I suppose there's, there is that. He went and uh, spoke to the fan. Went and spoke to the yeah. away fan. Yeah. But in my experience of watching town, <laughs> that ends badly. More but, super stuff over. <laughs> but it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's the cat. But it's the catalyst. It's the catalyst. Like you have that moment with Morsi at Bristol Rovers, yeah. yeah. and suddenly you were sitting here talking about Brian Bristol City. Like Trying. that, you could say that was the catalyst. He took that back to the dressing room with a, you know, it lit a fire. You, you, if you mm. want to go in that room, I remember. That. I remember when we lost to Norwich two 0 at home. When I think that was the season we got promoted, Matt. It was a March game, and I remember Matt Holland always used to do his little lap of honour, didn't he, round the pitch, clapping the fans. He oh, comes yeah, to the North yeah. Stand that. He comes to the North Stand that day. Got absolute dogs abuse. Mm. Did Kevin Lisby score for Norwich that day? Was that no, his? no, no. That was not? Not, not. No, it was it was two nil. Um, I don't know who scored for them, but Lisby was not. I don't think he played there then. It, what it was, was the year? Okay. It would be nine. It would be two thousand, March two thousand. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Norwich to Ipswich. I always like to March think the catalyst for our upturning fortunes after Bristol Rovers when me and Rich did the show. I said we're not going to get no. promoted on these tactics. McKenna needs to change or go. <laughs> You know what agree with that one? Here we are now. <laughs> there, there, there we, we go. are now. I'll take the and credit. There we are now. <laughs> there, yeah, you, you, you do that, Matt. You, you, you've taken all the credit. <laughs> uh, I've got it here. I've got something here anyway. Here we go. 2 0. Um, no, McKenzie scored at four. Was it McKenzie? That was that was that was that was a game when he did score, but I think Leon. that was that was a 2 0, was wasn't that, it? That was a little bit that was later on when we'd gone up and gone down, yeah. I think. We are we we are sifting through Leon the decade McKenzie. of domination here, aren't we? Leon, the decade of domination. I see a tweet yesterday from a Norwich fan saying about the sixteen years of domination. Get that sign can, ready, Gov. We'll Get little, that printed we'll give, up. While we're here, we'll give him a little trophy. There it is. Like, they they're like the little brother that no one ever listens to, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> pipe that over there. You ain't. They're like Jay from in between us. That's what they like. <laughs> yeah. Decade of domination. Come on, completed it, mate. <laughs> completed it, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you have, boys. <laughs> Shut up. Um, Alchie said, you can't forget the Toto at Charlton. He said it was funny. At the time, I didn't, I didn't remember laughing. Or many people were laughing, Alchie. He was but... grim at the time, didn't he? I remember Rich phoning me and going, it's all kicking off here. <laughs> that was... Yeah, I was down there. Right. I said to the boys, I said to the boys, just wait here. <laughs> Overall went, you're a disgrace. You're a disgrace. <laughs> and Christian Seriously? Walton, Christian Walton on loan. I remember we, us saying, why would you want to sound for town? That fan yeah, come running on and shoved him out. Like, Look, I give Toto the credit. That's brave. You, you, I don't He's think you, no, he wasn't the captain, or, or he may have been that. Not, I don't know. I can't remember what the team was, what the situation was. But from my memory, he wasn't the captain. Took a lot of guts to make that trip over. I don't think he played for town again. <laughs> well, he maybe did. He, he, maybe, he maybe did. I think that, that was it. Point. I think um, that was it. That was wait. a horrible. That was a horrible night. We lost two 0 but we were battered that night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Walton, Walton had a very good game that night, didn't he? Blimey. He did. Grim. And it, was, did. It, was it the Barrow replay after that one? <laughs> what a great four days. <laughs> it, was, was. it was the Barrow on the Wednesday. It was, I think it's Wednesday night, wasn't it? Oh, my Daniel Lord. says uh, you and Roberts. That's yeah, you and Roberts. He was playing. I think um, he probably yeah. might have been one of them. I had the score in the, in the attendance, but no actual goal scorers. So I couldn't <laughs> give you the information. Um, like say, before... In a decade of domination, it's difficult to... They all merge to one, don't they? Yeah. Between Leon and we McKenzie happy that Norwich is on a Saturday Leon lunchtime, Robertson. by the way. Anyway, I hope the trains are running. <laughs> I'm not even bothered to be honest with you. I'd uh, rather it was a Saturday than a Sunday. If yeah, honest. I'd agree with that actually. Yes, I, I'd rather it was a Sunday than a Saturday. <laughs> oh, there you go, just because I've, I've planned my whole week that week 
based on a Sunday fixture. What are you doing that week? Where are you going anyway? I'm going back to Butlins, mate. Oh, he's at the Butlins. With his vouchers, with your vouchers, yeah. With my vouchers, um, <laughs> pod, we podcast in masterclass uh, speaking. Um, oh yeah, stuff yeah. from from your lady wife. Um, yeah, yeah. So Sophie's booked it. Christmas so extravaganza. Okay. So when when do you come back? On the Friday night. The Friday night, and I thought it's all right. I've got <laughs> I've got all day Saturday to charge me gear up, ready for the no. match day reaction on Sunday. No, no. well, you got to be there. We got to do a show before the game. Surely yeah, that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should we, we do it, by, it hard. The, by the Sir Bobby? I don't know if he'll let you down that <laughs> Let's do it in the pub. Let's go in the pub and do it. Should we get like up? Get it's, it's, almost, it's almost like seeing the end of the, the Roman Empire, isn't it? Because like, this 16 years of domination going to yeah. come to end on the, on the 16th of December. So you want to be as close as you can to that end of, the, of an empire, yeah. right? That, that Rome great colossus that have achieved absolutely <laughs> nothing. I wonder if Will Jennings will be there after his uh, little trip to Ipswich yesterday. Let's leave that there. Um, <laughs> It'd be like, do you remember when they when the, they found Saddam Hussein in that home and they pulled down the Saddam Hussein big statue, that huge statue? It'd be like Delia will come tumbling down onto, onto Ipswich Town, Suffolk land. It's just the end of an Explosion. empire. An end of an era. Um, <laughs> not, um, not that I'm um, comparing Saddam to Delia, obviously, but you know, just in terms right. of iconic figures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so we, we think it was you and Roberts because Kevin's also confirmed that in the chat. Back to Wednesday, right back, Clark or Williams? That's probably the only question mark, I, I, I guess, elsewhere. He's Williams, got to be Williams isn't it, after his performance with Preston. He was great in that game. And got a great goal as well. Superb. But, you know, let's not have short memories. Clark scored a really good goal Two against ticks. Blackburn, didn't he? You know. Yeah, that's all right, Rich. You take your time, mate. Um, he did. But then with the, with, with, with the full-backs or wing-backs with the 3-5-2, it might be a situation where um, you go with Clark instead. A bit more solid. So, solid. Mm, maybe. Well, Williams is also good defender, to be fair. So it's not like you're... It's, it's good that you've got... Because, like, up until Williams... Up until Williams coming into the side, we were actually saying Clark looks like the player that we thought we were getting and he scored and he had a, a man of the match performance um it's good argument well it, it's good to have both as options in it you can flip a coin i hope Jim mckenna doesn't flip a coin <laughs> he's actually a bit more tactically sound than i would be heads or tails sure he um but i think you pick you i think williams has to keep playing just because of the because of the goal he scored and man of the match style performance i think at mm. Palmer Road. maybe a fridge appearance rich i mean you came in for burgess out of the blue is it is it something that you'd you know um, I don't, revisit? I don't think so. Not at the minute. Tony Zabi on the bench. He doesn't. Kieran doesn't like having a centre half on the bench, does he? He wants to be a lot more gonna flexible. Him, he's, got, he's, got he's, he's got Don Ball. He's got Don Ball to slip in there. He can go. I mean, he's only got nine substitute places. Like <laughs> doesn't <laughs> doesn't want to waste one. Don't want to waste one with a centre half that you're not going to use. We've got nine slots there. Let's not stick a set of half on there. Yeah. So twins A, twins A, B, and Walton for, for for the Fulham game then. Yeah, uh, or yeah, or Plymouth. Oh, not uh, Walton, but maybe uh, yeah. Twan Zabi. Who knows? Who knows? I'm looking forward to seeing Twan Zabi. Looking forward. No, to I know it. you are. You keep you keep bringing him up when you want to see him in the squad. So you mm. obviously are excited to see it. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, uh, ben Moore never going to happen, but Clark further forward in, in that burn draw with more defensive Williams behind him. Clark done the burn draw at Stoke. Uh, has there been any update on on Wesley and his shoulder? Do we know anything? Does anyone? I know can't tell you. Start? You can't, can't tell you. Can't tell you. Okay. All right. He's got a shoulder, ladies and gentlemen. That we can tell you. Um, You're not going to hospital with a bunch of grapes today, are you, Rich? Later on. <laughs> 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 we'll find out on Wednesday, I'm We're, sure. I, I just wanted to say the actual update or not. The uh, Dapo, is he still going to be out for Wednesday? Was that a long well, term? Uh, he said he was seeing a specialist, didn't he? I suppose Kieran will do his press. It was that bad? Be... Yeah, well, look, I, I just think. They just have a little look. Was it they? ankle? Ankle, was it? Achilles, Achilles. Oh, don't like that. No. Don't like that. I just said he was going to get to see a specialist, but I don't know. Happy to sure. Hill. Maybe they can manage it like they did with Clark. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. we all thought he was going to go under the knife and we he wouldn't be seen again. No. Um, Lee said, Rich is smiling, so it must be good news. Blink <laughs> once for good news, <laughs> twice for no news. <laughs> 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 now he's closing his eyes. Look, um, I didn't even know that he's going to disappear again in a minute. Oh, knew Amazon, <laughs> uh, yes. right? There we go. We're going to end the show in just a second. Um, 
with the, with the tribute. Uh, anything else before we go? Do you want to do a score prediction for Wednesday? Obviously, we're back on Wednesday night for our match reaction show. Then back on Friday for a match preview to Plymouth. Oh, that big, it's Club 1878 being rolled out. Yes, yeah, that, that special appearance, that big local derby, <laughs> that League One derby. Um, Get the disco music out, the club, the clubbing. <laughs> yeah, we owe them. We owe them boys one, don't we? We owe several, don't we? We do. Trust Ipswich. Really? We one of the you know have one of the one of the greatest, if not the greatest, starts to, to championship life, and still be second. <laughs> but would sell would sell for second coming. Yeah, oh, absolutely season, would, we? would. But like. What is it about his club? I mean, great unprecedented I run. I think um, it was, was Leicester, Leicester's victory yesterday. I think that's the best start ever in history now, isn't it? Yes. I Until think to, in play. the championship. So um, what, Burnley, what stage were Burnley? Because Burnley had a lot of draws, didn't they, we were saying? Yeah. Like, and then they, they at the end, they went been on, on the run. some ridiculous... Maybe they've peaked too early, Leicester. Maybe they're going to fall off. You know, My, um, my friend, Nick, who sports Burnley, what thinks company's rubbish now. Too arrogant. Get him gone. <laughs> Too arrogant for the Premier League. <laughs> I think I'm go. all. I'm, no I'm all it is, but you're in the league above. You're not going to win every game. Are you? Have they won a game yet? Uh they beat Luton. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I See, everyone, thought they, three, everyone, right? thought, everyone thought they're going to be the whipping boys. <laughs> yeah, not at the moment. Not oh, at the moment. They're, they're, they're doing all right. They're doing all right. Come back yesterday. Was it 2 2 yesterday? Before yeah, 2 0 down to Forest. 2 0 yeah. down, weren't they? Yeah, fair play to them. Play that's it, that that's a team that would concern me more. Forest, like uh, they're so, so unpredictable. They, they don't uh, ever yeah. like they're not consistent in their and they've spent and they spent a fucking great load of money, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, I like <laughs> Steve <laughs> Cooper. I like I Steve do. Cooper. I do, but yeah, I do no, th- I do think how long will he last? Because they are like you say, they're very inconsistent. Um. Consistently in getting draws, but that's, that's the only consistent they've got. I just don't know. That might be good enough in the Premier League these days. To, you know, Chelsea, to, to didn't they? You well clear, Chelsea. yeah. They yeah, really but I, I, th- I think there's going to be worse teams than Forest this season. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Bournemouth, Jefferson United, and Burnley being three. Yeah, Bournemouth. 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 Great, you, great see... decision to get rid of Gary O'Neill. Well done, lads. Well, that's <laughs> Not one again. Did you see Sean Dyche yesterday about we're all donuts? Do you agree with him? When he says about how they run over the screen and it's pointless, we all wait around like donuts. We all know he's being called to the screen and it's not going to change, or it's going to be you know, it's already been decided. Do we need referees to run to the screens? Can't the guys with their 92 camera angles or whatever number he said make the decision mm. and say, Look, we've all looked at it, we've all agreed it's a penalty, change the decision, or whatever? Like, does do we need a referee to run to a screen? Is he right? That's a bit of drama, doesn't it? When he went, Oh, really. he's going to the screen. He's going. He just sits there and looks at it. So I might find out next season. <laughs> Has it ever been sort of, you know, gone the other way by running to the screen where the referee's dug his heels in and said, Oh, no, my decision stands. Uh, it's still... not, every, not every decision that I've goes to the that, screen though. is going to be a, be Bundesliga, a penalty. Yeah. It's happened in the Bundesliga uh, um... a few times. The, the majority of times when he runs over there and has a look, he's going to be it's going to be a penalty, isn't it? I've not actually seen it, but yeah. if you if you're putting your arms out in the penalty area now and it's hitting you on the um hitting you on the arm, it's going to be a penalty. But, but this it's, is what we haven't take, got at the minute. It just takes but, so long, doesn't it, to make the decisions? At least with cricket, Rich, when they go up to the DRS, whatever it's called, at, at, at least there's that natural break in the game. It just seems too long for football for me. Um, oh, yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah, I'll get from but, that point of view. Then I would agree. But then, got, but then I watched last night. Cricket. Then I watched last night the rugby. The the clock's always stopping there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. which I, I I like that. You've got that on the screen. You know where you are time wise. Whereas when you're watching football, and I've said this loads of times on here, no one knows how long the bloody referees are going to add on at the end of the game. Yesterday, a difference now, haven't we? Yeah. Anyway, yesterday. By the way. Go and search out the highlights yesterday. For, there's a guy called, uh, he does a vlog called Around the Grounds. He's a Sheffield Wednesday fan. He yeah. was at Rochdale versus Oldham yesterday in the National League. It's <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Is it? Because, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it was 4-3 to Oldham. Oldham playing away. Big local derby, Matt. I think they're five miles mm. apart. Don't like Don't mm. like each other. And there's some proper scrapping from the fans. It's <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, they just climb over the barriers and the stewards are like, I'm not oh getting involved there. Oh my god! Classic. Back to the old days. Not that we <laughs> condone the fighting old... among fighting amongst the fans, but it was. Um... I think certainly when you're you're right about that because on that opening day of the season we had 13 minutes added on for Sunderland, didn't we? At the stadium, alignment thinking, oh my god, is every week going to be like this? 
not really had that since, have we? What's the most no. we've had since? Like a, a seven minutes or eight minutes, maybe? Certainly we've not had it at Portman Road anyway, going like that in the games we've been to. Two questions before we uh, round up. Uh, answer them both at the same time. Score prediction for Wednesday and what is your expected points return from this week, Rich? Uh, six points. 2-1 town. Ooh, love that. Confidence. Like it. Matthew Phillips. I think... Um, <laughs> it's yeah. going to be negative. I can tell. No, I'm not going to be negative. No, I'm not going to be negative. <laughs> um, it was just very interesting to me that commentary had all that... No, not that it counts for anything. They had over 60% possession yesterday. 15 corners. It would work twice. Lose 1-0. So it just showed you that Bristol City are capable of a smash and grab. And I don't... If you say Rob Dickey scored, I'm presuming it's from a set piece. So, I mean, look, we've been a bit cold. You know, we've not been too good from them in, in uh, some of the other games. I think we'll get a draw there. I think we'll get a draw there and then we'll think we'll beat Plymouth at Portman Road. So I'm going to take a four-point return is what I would go for. All right. No way. So you're on four points. Yeah. Rich is going right. six points. Point. Let us know what you think in the chat, live or with your watch on Catch Up. Let us know in the comments. Uh, Matt, we're going to hand over to you now to finish the show for the last 10 minutes. So over to you, my, my yeah, good thanks, friend. Thanks, Martin. And Mark Ashton. Yeah, well, we had the sad news, of course, yesterday broke that Sir Bobby Charlton, icon of English football, probably an icon of world football, had passed away. And uh, it's a great pleasure to bring in someone who saw him play at Portman Road. It can only be the one and only Colin. Colin, in you come, my friend. Here he is. So, Colin, 86-year-old Sir Bobby Charlton, Ballon d'Or winner. It's over 600 appearances for Manchester United, over 100 appearances for England. I mean, I suppose when you saw him play at Portman Road, it was like, you know, as part of that, whole, that the Trinity, the Holy Trinity at United, Lord Best Charlton. I mean, it must have been like seeing gods before you on the green turf of Portman Road back in the day. Yeah, well, f first of all, good afternoon, Matt, and, and thank you very much to Martin for letting me do this because it's really going to be from my heart. Um, the one game... Or the, the first game I can remember watching, re really vividly watching uh, Bobby at, Bobby Charlton at Portman Road was uh, not, uh, 19, 1968, 69. I was coming up 12 years old. And the game was, the game was on the, fir the, the, the 1st of February, 1969. Bobby had just become Ipswich manager, Bobby Robson, um, um, taken over from Bill McGarry. And um, I remember vividly the program, and uh, remember saying to Dad, "Yeah, because it was the photographs in programs in them days were black and white." I remember seeing it. It was like when the players used to stand on them stools so they looked higher on each other. And Bobby was at the front. I remember sitting next to Matt Busby with the European Cup between their feet. And I remember saying to Dad, oh, my God, Dad, you know, look, there's the European Cup, you know, because obviously over the first English side, they were win it in 68, which is that previous uh, previous May, you know. And um, and there we was, you know, Portman Road, nearly 31,000 there that day. I looked that up this morning. And then 31,000 in Portman Road in them days, was, you know, that was before even the cobblestone was built. And that was really tight, really tight. Yeah. Crammed in. And, that, and, 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 and the team that day was Stepney, Tony Dunn, Crerand, James, Fitz, John Fitzpatrick, Willie Morgan, Nobby Styles, George Best, Bobby Charlton, obviously, Brian Kidd and Dennis Law. Believe it or not, we won 1-0 that day. Tony Dunn scored an own goal up in Allstand, I believe it was up in Allstand. Um, and... You know, I, I just I just can believe I was watching a player that you know three years period pre previous I was I was watching as a nine stroke ten year old um, win the World Cup. You know, and uh, I always remember you know watching him on, on Port and Road because Port and Road always was, was always a gorgeous pitch, and um, and he used, just used to glide across the pitch. You know. And obviously seeing George Best on the left wing or sometimes he played on the right wing, Dennis Law. But yeah. and, and, and another thing I always remember about Bobby, I, I texted this to Rich last night. And funnily enough, 
believe it or not, it was on the front page of my paper this morning. That shirt, I always remember that shirt. The first one that I can remember, the the, the just the red shirt. I texted this to Rich last night. Mm. The, the white red collar. shirt, just the white round collar, white mm. cuffs. The what you know, the the white shorts and the, and the, and the red socks, or sometimes black black socks, and um, you know, no badge. At that time, there was no badge before they had the collars. They had the collars, then they had the badge on. But they used to have no badge, no sponsors. And like I said to you this morning, Matt, I remember them shirts. We used to have them at school, like, you know, when we play for the yeah. county and that. Then they were them cotton shirts. And when they got soaking in January, February, my God, it was like as if you was carrying another two stone. <laughs> but they're the things I remember, you know, that day, like, mm-hmm. you know, that, that first kind of time, that vivid time I can remember seeing Bobby play. Um, you know, and yeah, what would you like, Colin? Uh, what would you, what was, who would you compare him to now? So the young, young people watching this, who would you compare him to? Because he had a, he had a really hard shot from distance oh. with those old balls, didn't they? With the old the, balls. The, the, the thing is, Matt. The thing is, Matt. He had an absolutely unbelievable left foot, but he had a great right foot as well. And I remember I was watching match today last night, and I remember, I swear to God, I swear on my grandchildren's eyes. I remember that game against Liverpool, both them games against Liverpool, on match of the day as if they were yesterday when he when he banged it in up a cop end. And, you know, he was just... Uh, but but one memory I'd love to tell you. I'd just love Go to tell it. you in the viewers. Go for it. I remember it in, in 66. Um, like I say, I was nine going on ten. And... And obviously the World Cup was in the summertime, as we know. So I was off school, but I was obviously still quite a young lad. And I remember, I remember the first game that was on a Saturday. And then we played Mexico. It was a night game. I remember saying, me and my brother, he said, well, not so much my brother, he's older than me. But I remember saying, Dad, can I stay up? And he said, of course you can, Colin, because you're off school now, you know. And I used to, Dad used to let me stay up and watch the night games, you know. And I remember that game against Mexico as about as yesterday when he lashed him a couple of goals in. And also the game against Portugal, because again, that was the semi final and that was a night game as well. Yeah. And he scored twice again that night. And um he he it was just I'll tell you what he was like. He he was just like a Rooney or just like a Harlan or just like a, an Ian Rush. He was he was what I call a big game player. And the bigger the game, um, the better Sir Bobby seemed to play. And, and, and unfortunately, I suppose, in a lot of ways, Sir Ralph being such a studious manager that he was, when we played when we got to the final and we played when we beat Portugal, we played West Germany in the final. He 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 gave Bobby this um, the role where he he would follow France back and bar wherever he went, and for, and apparently Helmut Schuen said the same to France back and bar. You follow, <laughs> so so they kind of nullified each other. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and I and I don't think really, although we played so superbly well in the final, I I don't think we saw the best of Sir Bobby in the final because Sir Ralph had given this job to do. Yeah, which obviously cool. helped, and obviously won, won us the World Cup. Or, no, well, didn't win us the World Cup. Jeff Hurst won us the World Cup, for, to be totally honest about it. But that's another point, you know, getting on to Jeff. I mean... Um, Only one left know, now. That's it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you, 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 and, and I, I'm not reading this. Uh, you know, you've got, you got Gordon Banks, George Cohen, Ray Wilson, Nobby Styles, Jack Charlton. Uh, obviously, the great Bobby Moore, um, Alan Bob. Ball, Roger Hunt, mm-hmm. um, Martin Peters, um, you know, and and Alan Ball, and uh, and obviously Alf and Harold Shepherdson, who was the trainer in them days. I mean, they've all gone, and and you know, I just can't believe it. And I I, I said to Rich, and I said to the news agent down the then 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 the shop this morning when I got my paper. It was, do you know what? It's, it, with Jeff, it was like as if Matt, it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah. That Jeff would be the last one standing. 
Mm, yeah, the hat trick hero. Yeah, very exactly. true. Exactly. You know, and, and and that's quite ironic, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Yeah. Well, Colin, thanks for sharing your memories. I've got one just just to show you. We had a lad start at Wembley when I was there, and I had to take him round on a match day. This is where the offices are, and I said, "I'll take you down. I'll take you down to the dressing room area." So we go down there. I can't remember if it was an England game or it was the Community Shield or, or with May United playing or something like that. We go down into the dressing room area, into the tunnel, open the door, and they're standing right in front of us, walking from the dressing room to go to the lift to the hospitality. Was Bobby Charlton in his blazer and he had the time. And the, mm. the lad I was showing round, his face just went. He goes, "Is that Bobby Charlton?" I said, "Yeah, it is." And he was just he just followed him like that as he got into the lift and. He went up. So it just goes to show that people of my age who didn't who didn't see him play, you know, they they still respected him, knew him as a, a as a an, an icon of the game, and someone can, we will we will miss. Can, 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 can I just say though, Matt? I mean, obviously, I haven't said this, and I and I need to say this on behalf of everybody who watched this lovely show, um, behalf of yourself, behalf of Mark, behalf, behalf of Rich, um, on behalf of myself, and absolutely everybody. Uh, connected with Ipswich Town Football Club, I send I send my you know my my sincere condolences to to Lady Norma and his family, and also to Manchester United Football Club. Because another thing I've just got to mention that oh, I forgot, and I'm I've been d deeply sorry about that. We've got to remember that Bobby Chelton, so Bobby Chelton, sorry, was the survivor of the Munich air crash, and yeah. he lost eight of his greatest friends, that, that, that teammates, that, that horrible evening in Munich, um, that Munich air crash. And, you know, and I always remember Bobby Robson used to always say, and he played with the great Duncan Edwards, and there's a connection here with Ipswich Town Football Club. So Bobby wrote several times in different autobiographies or what have you, he reckons that Kevin Beatty, who was arguably our best ever player, was the only player he ever knew, and he knew Duncan Edwards well, that was anywhere near the great Duncan Edwards. And he was one of Sir Bobby's best friends. And he's now... He's now, with all his best friends... Is with is the the in my opinion equally with Alex Ferguson the greatest manager Manchester United have ever had, and they're all up there together. And um, so, Bobby, please rest in peace. Well said, Colin. That's we'll see you all again. We'll see you all again Wednesday, everybody. Have a great week. Cheers, mate. Crazy from just the thought of you. A long time.